Uganda. 38 million people. A people lost, desperate, hungry, hurting and searching for truth. In the far northern region of the country of Uganda, the town of Midigo became a region where people were entrenched in a cycle of illiteracy and poverty. It was a place that belonged to Muslims, unreached by the gospel. Midigo became a forgotten, insignificant place, cast away by the rest of the world. But God did not forget Midigo. God has sown many seeds of faith. Although some fell by the wayside, some were scorched, and some were taken by the thorns, some fell on good soil and grew. Through those good seeds, God has reached the people of Uganda in ways no one could have foreseen. My name is Dr. Juventine Emuku. I attended medical school in Uganda in one of the public universities. In 2000, I joined a missionary group and we traveled to Midigo to help fight an outbreak of cholera that had been in that area for two years. So when we went to Midigo, I saw there were major humanitarian needs and people were dying from disease, from malaria and from malnutrition. So we set up a small clinic to treat the people and we found that most of the people were Muslims and had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when I understood that the people of Midigo were spiritually blind, the Lord put in my heart to surrender everything I had into his hands and trust him. I then moved to Midigo and started a medical clinic under a mango tree and that was very different from conventional medicine, treating patients under a mango tree in the open. The Midigo Health Centre is one of the leading hospitals in this remote area of Uganda. The 70-bed facility has the goal of being able to service everyone within the community who comes in need of medical care. The staff works towards providing free, quality health care to the people of Midigo, with the ultimate goal of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with every patient who comes through the doors. In 2001, Dr. Charles joined Dr. Juventine to help with the growing ministry of the Midigo Health Centre. The two friends served side by side treating patients and ministering to lost souls. In 2013, Dr. Charles became the head administrator of the hospital. When I was serving in the hospital in Western Uganda, I felt the love of God compelling me to come because there was desperate need of clinical work. People were in desperate need. So that's what led me to come. Let's get the love of God and the love for the people. Being in this remote area of Uganda presents unique challenges to the hospital. The children here in this community I've seen are very malnourished. And there was some research done. Tell us about that. How many children in this area would be malnourished? From the 2011 survey that was done, we had 32% of the children malnourished. And from the experience through our, our, our outreaches, we look at increasing because, first of all, we have the highest, highest population increase, right? The food production is low, it's, it's facing challenges of climate changes. Some people plant food and they find out it will never come out well. And given even the social setting in our community, culturally, much of the food production is done by women. And this makes the food very inadequate in families, and this increases malnutrition in many families. So it is quite a challenge, especially for our children. Lack of food is one of the greatest challenges for the region of Midigo. Most medications require that patients take them with food. This can be a real problem when food is scarce and patients are too sick or too poor to get the nourishment they need in order to get well. Uh, some of the challenges that we face at the HIV clinic is mainly is nutrition. Many clients cannot not afford to have adequate food. You know, taking medication needs food. 
and many patients, because they cannot afford to get adequate food, they abandon the medicine. Because of this need, one of the ministries at the Midigo Hospital is a feeding centre, which provides necessary nourishment for patients who cannot provide food for themselves. This ensures that patients can take their medication and return to good health. The feeding centre also provides educational training for mothers that wish to know how to properly care for their children. So you really have a passion for maternal care and, and for the children that come into the hospital. Um, tell us about maternal services here. Uh, under maternal services, we have an uh, antenatal visit. These are mothers who immediately after they have conceived, they come to the health facility, we register, enroll them, and we prepare them for the delivery. Then too, we do admission for mothers who have medical-related conditions associated with pregnancy. Sometimes, in my story, I talked about a pregnant mother who developed malaria. There are a number of just mothers who develop malaria. Normally, when they come, we admit them, we give them the services. Thirdly, uh, even mothers who develop uh, complications, we normally meet, admit them and we take care of them. And when need arise, we even go ahead and operate on them. So those are just a package within uh, the maternal care. The health centre is committed to providing excellent prenatal and maternal care to women in the Midigo region. <laughs> So having the surgical center, being able to do emergency surgeries for, for women who are having problems during childbirth has been a real blessing to the community. I mean, what, what, if, what if this hospital wasn't here? What if the surgical center wasn't here? What if the funding wasn't here for these surgeries? Where would these ladies who have complications go? Uh, if this surgical center was not to be there, it would be a complete disaster to this community because the other health centers where similar services could be provided are extremely far away from this area. And unfortunately, by the time they begin to experience liver pain, complication is due to arise. I want to refer to one of the cases that I operated in theater uh, a few months ago. We had a mother who came all the way from Koboko, because they are, uh, Koboko is a nearby district. Uh, because there was no medical officer, was referred to Yumbe Hospital. And even then, there was no medical officer in Yumbe Hospital, and subsequently was brought to Medical Health Center 4. Uh, immediately when I operated on her, the baby was already dead, but thank God I was able to save the life of the mother. And those are some of the scenarios we could be expecting if this health facility was not to be here. The ultimate goal of the hospital is to share the gospel. Providing free medical care, food and health education demonstrates to this Muslim community that the Christians genuinely care about them. And it creates more opportunities to tell them about the love of God and the hope they can have in Jesus Christ. Since Dr. Juventine came to Midigo in 2000, there have been five Calvary Chapel churches planted in Uganda. In Midigo, Arua, Kubala, Yumbe, and most recently, Soroti. In spite of intense persecution, the believers in these areas boldly share the gospel with their Muslim communities.
As the Lord continues to add to the church, He continues to provide buildings to house the growing congregations. Pastor Chris, it was just seven months that we were walking this land, literally going through the jungle, praying about this facility. We're standing in the middle of a, a beautiful sanctuary. Oh, yeah. God's done amazing things. Tell, tell us kind of what you're feeling about all this, the miracles that God has done. I, I just feel joy in my heart, and, and it's beyond everything. When I just look at what the Lord has done in this place, I just raise up my hands and glorify God. Because I never thought in my mind and even in my heart that something like this can be done in the hearts of, of Yumbe, in the, this town council where Muslims are many, 99%. I don't believe that could, it could happen. It's just like so glorious and I just glorify God for this. Each of the Calvary Chapel church plants teach the word of God verse by verse and offer various discipleship ministries. Children are especially open to the gospel and much of the ministry focuses on reaching the next generation of Ugandans for Christ. When we were uh, in Arua for the very first time, we uh, hired a room which was in town for fellowship. And in that time, we found that there were kids who were living around. So we asked uh, our neighbor, and uh, he told us that these children live in the street. You know, like, could God also do something for such children? And we started praying about that, and the children started attending church with us. So we're like, how can we help these children uh, get better things than just like be in the street. It was kind of a little bit challenging because of the lifestyle these kids have been in. Uh, you know, bringing a thief into your home, you would want to say like, oh no. And the scripture, you know, which says Jesus came for the sick and the sick are thieves and uh, robbers and all those who do bad things and of which these kids were. So I'm like, if Jesus came to die for people like this, how do I make Jesus available to them? At the Arua Boys Discipleship Home, former street children have given a safe place to sleep, good food to eat, and a community of boys that works just like a family. Most importantly, they are taught the scriptures and are discipled by house parents who pour the love of God into them. Uh, one good thing we've seen just uh, sharing the word of God is just that uh, these children get to really love God, not because we tell them, hey, you know, you need to become a Christian, because becoming a Christian is the best way, no. We just shared them the gospel of Christ and they got to love it and that brought them to Christ. So they love Christ for who they know he is, not because we tell them to just be Christians, but they're Christians because they know Jesus. When we started Calvary Chapel Arua in Arua town, we got the street boys to be our friends. And when we started helping them, our question was, where are the girls? Because we knew there must be girls somewhere. It was, however, very hard to approach women in the streets and ask them to be, you know, to help them to come out. So we continued praying. And some other people kept talking to us about the burden of what is going on in the streets in the night. Until the beginning of this year, God brought to us one lady who chose to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in our service, and she wanted out. And so she, she was brought to us, and she said she, she, she was tired of the life and wanted a new life. But it was going to be very hard to take care of one girl, rent for her home, disciple her. And so we sent her to look for others, and she happened to be their leader in the streets. So she brought to us all the 14 girls that we have gotten to know and we have been working with them. We got to rent this home that you see, and uh, so far, most of them are in school. Three are in boarding schools. They have gone back to school because they had dropped out. Others are doing various courses. 
and we are trusting God for the future. They are hopeful, they are growing, they are learning to love the Lord. Uh, something like two weeks to, to one month, they started giving their lives to God because we came to talk to them about Jesus. Now all of them have a personal relationship with Jesus and they are growing. There are challenges of course, but we thank God because we see God at work in their lives. And we are grateful to have the team that we work with who are dedicated to see that these women have a different future. One ministry that has partnered with the work of Calvary Chapel Midigo is Promised Child, a child sponsorship organization that provides for the needs of children as a means to share the gospel. Because of the lack of proper schooling in Midigo, they have been working towards providing education. Promised Child uh, we started in, in Uganda, in, in Yumbe, particularly Midigo, in 2008, we did 25 children. Many children were not going to school, no uniform, no shoes, no books. And when Promised Child stepped in to do enrollment of these kids, and we got 25 kids, the very first day we got these kids, we bought them uh, good shoes, good uniform, good clothing, and life began to manifest in these unprivileged children. So tell me about the Promise Child program. You've seen the school grow. Uh, you know that many of the children are supported, and that support goes to providing for some of the needs for the children. Mm -hmm. um, how has that helped the school? The, the program is helping the school so much because there are so many parents who are not able to afford like school fees, not able to afford scholastic materials, not able to afford even lunch. But because of this program, many of the children have been sustained in a school and the parents are so excited about Promised Child Program. And I just pray that God continues sustaining this program for the betterment of our country and our children. There are many stories in the Bible. Can you mention for me some of the names of people in the Bible that you know? Mama, Moses. Moses. Uh -huh. David. What, what was David doing? What was David's work? Hmm? What was David's work? He was the king. Very good. Another one? Another person? Hmm. Solomon. Very good. Sam. Joel. As the region of Midigo was evangelized and many began to come to Christ, the Christians needed a place to send their children to school. The only schools in the area were Muslim, so the Calvary Chapel Midigo Primary School was founded in 2005. The school offers affordable, nurturing instruction from a biblical worldview. Many times they come with testimonies and they tell us that um, uh, their children are improving, their characters are improving. They're even wondering what is happening to the children in school because their children in this school, when they go home, they become like teachers in the community, teaching other children how to behave. So it's very encouraging. One thing we have been praying for and we are still praying for is uh, we need to develop reading culture. Our culture is so poor that people are not developed to read. So in, in this school, we would want to develop that culture, uh, knowing very well that if children can read well, they will be able to pass very well. They can excel in, in education. It's been a blessing to be able to start a computer, a lab here. So what has that meant to you and in, in the school? It has been a great blessing that we have computers in the school and probably some parents feel their children should come to this school so that they are able to learn computers. The children behind me are from the fourth grade class here at Calvary Chapel Midigo School. They are um, for their computer lesson right now. I started these children when they were in third grade. I taught them a few basic things about the computer, how to use a mouse, what the different parts are called, and then we introduced them to typing. So they've been learning typing for the past year and a half. Some of them are getting pretty fast. 
Uh, this lab is a big blessing to this school and these children. There are not any primary elementary schools in the entire district, region, really, um, West Nile region, that are available to children this age. You might find a few high schools that have a few computers, but the majority of people are not computer literate. Even you'll find the principals of schools, government officials, they don't have computers, they don't know how to use them. So for these children to start learning at this age is a huge advantage for them. One important thing is for us to trust God where he wants to lead us next. Everything that has happened is through prayer and through our commitment. Though we are persecuted, I know that God is with us. The word of God says those who trust in him will not be tales, which means the children can do much greater things. They will be empowered, they will know the word of God, they will know what to do in life, so that will be amazing. It is without question that God is doing a powerful work in Uganda, and because of the faithfulness of his servants, many are coming to know the Lord. Nine hours from Midigo, in the town of Soroti, a new branch of the ministry has begun. In 2013, God moved Dr. Juventine to Soroti to plant a church and to open a new hospital. The Bethesda Hospital in Soroti provides the best medical care in the region, using state-of-the-art technology and equipment as a means to share the gospel. The vision that the Lord put in our hearts is to develop a facility uh, that will be the leading provider of quality health services in this country. People come into this facility physically hurting and you're allowed to comfort them with the love of Christ and allow them to leave spiritually built up with hope. Yeah, I, it's been Exciting for me, there are some women that have come in and just just weeping uncontrollably and you lay your hands on them and pray for them. They leave going back home with a smile, with a purpose in their lives. And, and not only just being able to preach the gospel as we are uh, to those that are seeking health care, but there are also those in the hospital, there are those that are dying and being able to take them through that process with the hope in Jesus Christ, for me that is but that is phenomenal. Our goal really is to be able to be a one-stop center where sick people will be able to come and be treated. And of course, to be able to provide treatment for them, we need the medicines. And, and, and these medicines are quite expensive here in Uganda because almost all the medicines are imported. Sometimes many of them are not even able to pay for their medicines. So some of these medicines are subsidized for some people. And so keeping the pharmacy stocked is very, very important so that it's a one-stop center. So when somebody comes sick, we are able to uh, treat them and give them their prescriptions and they go home with the prescriptions. Because the Lord has blessed the hospital in Sorote, they will be able to help support the Midigo Health Center, the boys and girls homes in Arua, the schools in Midigo and Yombe, and the churches that have been planted so far. The hope of Calvary Chapel Midigo is to plant many more churches and to see all of Uganda turn to Christ. I've been watching on God's faithfulness. I look at Midigo starting deeper in the village and most of the people never thought that it will grow up and build many churches. But God is using Midigo in a different way. That out of Midigo, five churches have been planted, showing the grace of God and the God fulfilling all that He promised. I know God will not just plant a church here just for nothing, to be just a building. I know that God has a plan because the Lord who has been able to plant it here then the souls, they are easier for him to win. Because I just look unto the Lord and say, God, I'm here waiting to see the souls that you're going to save. And it's really joy in my heart and, and all the time I'm always glorifying God and say, God, I know you have a brand and you're going to fill this church. When we trust in the Lord, 
however small we are, however the small church is, however deep in the village is, doesn't matter whether it is in town, it is known or not known. But the Lord will use that church as long as the servants are faithful to His word. And out of their faithfulness and the tears they, they shed to God, God has done it. And they just give glory to God. I, I know that the Lord is going to change the community. Many people are going to come to Christ. Many people are going to realize that God is powerful and God is their God. As He said in His word, that all the knee and all the tongue will confess that He is the Lord. And I believe that people in this city will come and worship God here. Kneel down and say, Jesus, you are the Lord.